Okay, now I expect you're probably still drawing at the moment. Uh, where possible, and I'd advise, you know, with inner surface area and volume topic, we really should be up to this now. Bring a ruler and use it when you are constructing a diagram like this. It's not necessary. I didn't use a ruler for this, but that's partly because this diagram is the size of my face. So it's a lot easier to make a neat diagram when it's enormous. If you're drawing a smaller one, precision matters a lot more. Straight lines will help you draw a diagram that is more helpful to you. That's the point. It's not that we have a fixation on rulers. We just want to help you make better diagrams. Now, as you're going, I want you to notice what I have done. The first step was, let's just reproduce what they've got. Let's just do that, draw it all, put all the measurements on, and as I do that, I get a better understanding of how the shape fits together. Then, secondly, and I've done this in another color because the more colors I have um, in a meaningful way, the less busy my diagram will be. Can you see what I've put in blue there? What am I doing? Which principle am I using here? This is the second principle. I'm naming, I'm labeling those faces so I can talk about them. Okay? Now, just put your pens down for a second. I will give you time to finish. But I want you to look at the next step I'm about to do because it's a bit unusual. This kind of shape, which is sort of rectangular in a lot of ways, even though the whole thing is L shape, this shape is quite common. Okay? So therefore, I'm going to give you a bit of a tip for this one, which is uh, useful for these particular kinds of shapes. Not useful all the time, not useful for these, but you'll see these so often, it's worth knowing this specific tip. Have a look. Do you see I've labeled three of the faces? Okay. Uh, bottom, the front, and this right hand side one. Okay. How many faces are left to label? Five. Count carefully. So it looks to me like I haven't done the back. I haven't done the back. Uh, I haven't done, so there's one. I haven't done this side face, this face, this face, or this face. Do you agree? I've been counting so far. How does that look? Five? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah? Okay. Now the reason why I haven't, we can go through this one at a time. The first face I mentioned that I haven't labeled is the back. Can you give me a suggestion as to why I have not labeled the back? Right. Very good. If I work out the front, I just need to double it and I've got it. I don't need to give front and back different names. It's the same thing. The less names I have, the better, to be honest. So I'll name what I absolutely have to. Then, going forward, have a look, for example, at the faces that are looking upwards. That's this one and this one, okay? Now, they're currently positioned quite far apart, but I want you to imagine, in your mind's eye, I want you to imagine taking this, not changing its size, but just moving it up here. Translating it is the fancy word we use. If those two upward faces were next to each other, what would they become? They would become the bottom face, wouldn't they? Or they'd become the same size as the bottom face. Do you agree? Okay. So therefore, rather than giving them independent names, which is confusing, I'm going to call this one top one and top two. So that I know, actually, you know what? When they go together, they'll be the same as the bottom. They're really two parts of the same thing. Do you see where I'm going to go next? Why I didn't write in the left faces? Because again, you play the same trick. Uh, this guy here, the really tall vertical one, if you move him over, he's going to combine with this guy and be together the same as the right. Are you with me? So therefore, I'm going to call this left one and left two. Okay? Now, I'm ready. I'll let, I'll let you get a bit of a head start on me. I'll write my first line down and then you see where you would take it from there. I will say surface area <laughs> equals, okay? And I'm going to name all my faces, every single one, all added together, and then I'll start to actually substitute values in, okay? So I've got, let's see here, two times front plus
that's the head start I'm going to give you. I think you will do really well and we'll solve this as efficiently as possible if you start with this. I'll let you get a head start and work out those numbers. Okay. I want you to just have a look at this working. If you didn't get it or got something dis that you disagreed with, maybe you want to come up here and grab a picture. As you're packing up, there are two final things I want to know. You have to make a composite face here. Like even this face is composite. You can do it by addition or subtraction. I did it by addition. Last thing, like with your ice cream cone, just watch out when you've got faces that are in contact with one another. See this circle here on the bottom of the hemisphere and on the top of the cone? Do you include that? No, but why not? It's not part of the surface, right? So just watch out for that in your formula.